Hi everyone, welcome back to part three of the Land Rover build. In this part, I am going to get into the painting stage of it, which uh, as you can see here, will bring me up to where we are, as you can see it as it is. Um, for this, I'm going to be using the Gen 3 set, which has got the British sand colour in it. That one just there. And uh, obviously going to be lightening and darkening and, and doing some other effects as well while we're uh, while it's in the spray booth. So I uh, hope you enjoy this episode and um, on with the show. So just mix the colour up. What I've done is a 50-50 mix of, um, of the colour and the thinners. No flow improver or anything. I've been finding it spraying better without. Okay, so we've got, as you can see, that sort of consistency. I'm going to be using my Renegade coat. Just move everything out of the way. Right, just do a test spray. So, Excuse the compressor. All right, so what we're going to do is just give it a quick sort of light base coat, just a gripper. Okay. Let's get a build up around all the edges. So as you can see, we've just got a bit of a, a uh, gripper coat on there. What I'm going to do is use the black primer as a bit of a, obviously, a pre-shade. So it squares into all the, the nooks and crannies will be, um, you know, try and remain dark. And then I'm just going to build the colour up to sort of the opacity that I want it to be. Um, obviously, this is going to be lightened, darkened, uh, and all you know washes and everything's going to go on it so it's going to change but I'm just going to get a initial sort of base coat down just so I've got sort of a, a map of where I'm going to go again as I was saying again if um, 
you know, you put a grey primer down or a white primer down or, or whatever colour primer you go for, then obviously the coverage is going to be different. I've gone for a black one, a black primer, just because, like I say, I just want to use it to my advantage for for a bit of shadows and... and a bit of contrast, so...
So what we'll do is just a quick recap of what I've just been doing. I've just been doing a bit of post shading and I've been using this game color wash. All right, um, it's sepia one, just to you know give a bit of post shading, a bit of shadowing. Not the easiest thing to airbrush, if I'm honest. It's not that controllable, so mm, I just wanted to give it a try, just to see how it worked. A lot of tip dry, even with Flow Improver. Uh, I think it's probably more, you know, for figure painting, as in for washing and brushing on. It can be airbrushed, like I say, but it's a, it's a yeah, it's a, a bit hard work. So next step for me, I'm going to just have a quick clean of the airbrush, clean out. I'm going to come back again with the base color, a little bit lightened okay and then we're going to go over it again blend all this in that you know i've just put on with the post shading and then try and tie it all together so i'll um i'll be back in a minute with the uh, with the next bit so post shading done we're going to go back to the original base color like i've said before so i'm going back to the british sand yellow this will wake up. Okay. Shove some in our little palette. I'm also going to add a bit of Iraqi army sand just to lighten that up a little bit. Don't get too much, but a couple of dabs of that. And then I'm going to take out Kinners. precise mixing ratio there we'll just thin it down and eyeball it if we get a bit of a lighter tint there we go so we can see that on camera Even that out of the way I'll try and add a couple more drops of thinner down a little bit so I'll just take that off there so what I'm going to do is just fill in some of the bits that we've already done Okay, just blend in any of the harsh post shading I did with the ink. I just want to do a bit of bleaching. trick is not to cover everything up that you've just done especially the post shading but just to blend it back in if it's gone a bit strong or a bit too much then you just come back in with either the original color if that's where you want to go or actually a lightened one what I've got here and then just go over it okay and just take your time go back and forward you know until you're happy with where you want to be so as you can see that's nicely blended in on that side and we carry on with the rest of it 
and uh, and then come back again and see where we've uh, ended up. So I've just had to add some final touches to my paint job. So for this, I'm going to be using the new Iraqi Army sand color. I'm just going to lighten it up sort of on the higher point of the vehicle. So top of the wheel arches, places like that, obviously, you know, front of the bonnet. Not going to go too mad with this, just to add a bit of contrast. So this is already mixed up in the airbrush. Same again with the AK thinner. So... Right, I think that'll do. I'm going to leave it at that. Next um, job is to give it a quick satin varnish just to seal all that in. And then we can go on to putting the decals on and the weathering. So we'll move back over to the other bench, get a bit of the detail painting done and get a coat of satin varnish on it. So we're back out of the spray bay, back over onto the workbench. As you can see, I've just dry fitted it all together okay so nothing's actually cemented the frame and, and um, bonnet and even the back is not down I've just wanted to just make sure everything was in what I've been doing just off cam is doing a bit of just touching in and painting of details um, hence the black and grey the actual Milan system was painted in just some olive greens that I've got, some old Vallejo colours that just rests on there, it's not stuck together. So, okay, just move the wimmick out of the way, or the Land Rover, should I say. So, yeah, just done a bit of detail painting, just use the lighter sand colour, just tops of the, the bolt heads uh, and some of the high spots, just to make the details pop. Obviously, that needs weathering up, so. That can be taken to bits. I have roughly 
just painted an engine. It's nothing like the real thing, but you're not going to see it anyway because the bonnet's going to be on it. So just do a quick sort of rough paint job just to uh, give it a little bit of detail. Obviously, I've still got the grill to put on the headlights and, and the shiny bits to put in, um, or the lighty bits, should I say. Same on the rear. Okay, got the back lights to put in. But all that will be done last off when it's um, when it's all complete. So I've just done a bit, a little bit of detail painting as well on the shovel. Um, I'm just going to paint up this sort of wooden um, part here, baton. I don't know what what it is actually, to be honest. But according to the instructions, it should be wood. So I will paint it wood. The other thing I've done underneath, which was a struggle. So if you are building this kit. Word of advice, because I built this front separate, as you've seen in the previous videos, uh, it's a bit of a pain to actually get it on and get it lined up with the gearbox. I can just take that wheel off, I thought it was falling off underneath. Uh, it's a tight fit because of the these parts of the engine. Okay, wherever this filter is here, I think. Um, because on the instructions it says to put all this together and then fit the wings after, which you know, I wanted to paint the engine all in there separate and keep it as separate components and then join it all together. Should have really followed the instructions because it does make it difficult. You can do it, but it's a fiddle and it's a real fiddle as well to get the exhaust system in underneath once they're on. So just something to bear in mind if you do ever build this kit, probably best to follow the instructions unlike me who thought better. So next step i'm going to do like i said when i came out of the spray booth is now this is you know pretty much going to be a straightforward now final construction break the components back down again go and give it a satin varnish and then um gonna add the few decals that there is to be honest there's about five or six decals if that there's not many so put the decals on and then we can start weathering so next job for me is which I'm not going to film because I don't think it's really you know I'm just going to give it a coat of AK satin varnish just to seal all that paint working really and then give me a nice um, sort of coat to go off with the with the next weathering steps so when we come back for the next part like I say, it will be on to all the weathering, which this is where it's going to bring it to life and make it pop. So I will see you very soon.